Hello. Yes, that's right. Never a better time for British nationalism than now. I have never been as enthusiastic regarding the possibilities of British nationalism than ever. When I first joined the once mighty National Front in 1978 and then the forthcoming general election was in May 1979, I was extremely enthusiastic, but I'm also extremely enthusiastic now. In fact, our chances are better now. The only thing missing with the enthusiasm is the marches, the Forest of Union Jackson, um, the speeches, rousing speeches, standing ovations and all the publicity on the TV and in the newspapers. That's the only difference regarding the enthusiasm that we don't have at the moment, right? But I'm still more enthusiastic regarding our chances now than back in 1979. Like I said, we're just minus all the razzmatazz. You see, our time is now without a doubt. Now, let me just give you a parallel here with what's happening now here in 2019 and what happened in 1979. In 1979, before the general election, I'll leave the link below, Margaret Thatcher talked about Britain being swamped by people of a different culture and people were getting worried and scared. So they were sitting up listening to the National Front. They didn't want to vote National Front, she said, but at least the National Front are talking about it. So she made all these false promises. She was going to stop immigration. Did she do so? No, she reneged on it and, and continued to flood Britain with third world immigrants. Boris Johnson's making the same noises now, isn't he? And he will betray his promise, like he'll betray Brexit. He's not delivering Brexit in a million years. It was never happening, but we already knew that. So I'm as enthusiastic, even more so, now, 2019, than I was in 1979. Like I've said, the only difference back in 79 was all the razzmatazz and the marches and meetings and rousing speeches and... Uh, standing ovations and all the publicity we're getting. That's the only difference. If we had that now, Christ, there'd be nothing stopping us. Nothing stopping us. So Boris Johnson is going to renege on his Cape immigration promise, right? Like Margaret Thatcher did. I think Nigel Farage now has woken up. I'm sure he has. He can now see the treacherous swines we've been fighting the past 40, 50 years. I think he understands it a lot more clearer now, right? He may even understand what we've been up against, right? Privately, privately. But regarding Nigel Farage, I believe that events and circumstances will drive him uh, nearer and nearer and closer and closer to British nationalism, its own form of British nationalism, not the British nationalism. Uh, we've been pushing, right? But similar, similar, but with a human, respectable face. I think Nigel Farage, I believe Nigel Farage now, can understand more clearly than ever what these bastards are up to. And he knows what has to be done, but we can't rely on Nigel Farage because he may not go where we need to go. He may not go all the way, should I say. He may go a little bit further than Boris, but not where we have to go. And then that's where we take over the reins then. And that's why a British nationalist, new British nationalist political party must be formed. In fact, will be getting formed. Uh, and there's two uh, reasons why I'm forming this uh, new nationalist political party. And one is to keep the flag of British nationalism flying because... There is no British nationalism now. There's the uh, pantomime and circus masquerading as British nationalism. And also to fight elections. What I will be doing with this new political party, I'll take a leaf out of Nigel Farage, because I won't have a membership for now. Because I'll be snowed down with too much work when, in all intents and purposes, this is a one-man army. And I hope that army grows bigger and bigger once I... Uh, form this new party. So it will be getting formed because our time is now. Sadly, Nick Griffin's abandoned us. He doesn't care no more. He's achieved what he set out to do and that was to get elected to the European Parliament. Uh, make steak and ale pies and drink copious amounts of uh, real ale. That's him now. On post, on Twitter or wherever as some nationalist prophet. What's the point in moaning and complaining, Nick, on Twitter or wherever? when you're not going to do nothing about it. 
Can you answer that one? But there again, you don't answer anything, do you? You've let us down. You surrendered the BMP and its membership list to the enemy. You haven't even apologised, let alone try and put it right. But Jones will put it right, even if it's just me, for now. And like I said, I've never been so enthusiastic than I am now, than even back in 1979. Right, we've got more support now than we did then. The only thing to say that's missing is the razzmatazz and the fanfare, which was brilliant. That kept the morale and enthusiasm going. But I'm still as enthusiastic than ever. Because all time is now the people I speak to. Christ, Joey, what's happening? Who do we vote for? Then that's all they keep saying to me. Well, you'll have a party soon to vote for. Jones. OK, thank you. Our activity must be geared to the winning of power. That still has to be said to some people in our movement here in America, back in Britain and everywhere else. They are crusaders for the truth, but they don't relate it to the necessities of winning power. It cannot be said enough. Power is what must be won. First, just a little bit of power. Then more power. And finally, complete power. Activity geared to anything else is a waste of time.